you can trigger any of the methods based on the instrument playing in Ableton. I don't know if that made any sense, so I'll show you some examples. What is good, my name is Dan, and for the past few weeks I've been building an audio visual project. And I realized today that I haven't really shared much info on what it is I'm building. My project is titled New World and it's essentially an audio visual pattern library. It's built in JavaScript and it uses real time MIDI data from an active Ableton Live session to display audio reactive visuals on the web browser. Now, why browser based in JavaScript? It's an interesting question because it might seem a little unorthodox and you probably wouldn't be wrong. Most people in this space go straight into things like touch designer, blender, processing, but hear me out. The browser today is not what it used to be. And as a programmer, I've seen client side development come a long way in just a decade. Things like code splitting, ES6 conventions, Webpack, and in my case, libraries like 3JS, D3 and P5 all make for a great performative experience in the browser. And you wouldn't normally think of a browser as being the visual medium for some sort of performance, but it actually works surprisingly well. So this project is a pattern library and within that library, we have modules and a module can be anything from a 3D rendered object like a planet. It could be some sort of sine wave, which can be manipulated, wave fractals, or even just standard HTML and CSS. So we have all these visual modules, but how are those used in an actual performance? How do you get to pick and choose which visuals are triggered? What kind of animations we're seeing in a session? This is where the composer comes in. The composer is essentially the fundamental logic handler of the pattern library. So it's a small object-based file written in JavaScript and it essentially retrieves methods from all of the available modules. So you can trigger any of the methods based on the instrument playing in Ableton. I don't know if that made any sense, so I'll show you some examples. Here you can see a kick drum in Ableton, and in my composer file, you can see that this kick drum is triggering the planet here to rotate every time it hits. And additionally, I can add a hi-hat here, and you can see a new effect taking place. So I've been really enjoying this approach as it can scale up into an almost infinite variation of modules and effects that can be used in any given performance. So as mentioned, I've been teasing some stuff on social media, just basic demos of what's capable in the browser with this pattern library. Later into the year, I've got some exhibitions to perform at, which should be really exciting. And I can really test the boundaries and limitations of this pattern library over longer periods of time. And then later into the year, I'm hoping to maybe even open source a pattern library, which could be cool. So to take a step back, why audio visual? Well, I've always been interested in the two and a lot of music is paired with visuals, vice versa. But I still feel like there's huge potential in how they can be used for a sensory experience. So audio and visuals are everywhere, though in many cases I feel it's a one-way relationship. There's artwork made for a piece of music or a score is written for a film. And not to devalue anything here because I feel like they definitely do add to the experience and become a piece of that work. Audio visual, however, has a slightly different approach. It's slightly more symbiont in its relationship. Um, it invokes the question, how can we take the audio and the visuals and make them the primary experience? It might sound self-explanatory, but I think it's a cool concept and there's a lot of artists in the space doing some cool stuff with this. Artists like Ryoji Adeka, 4040, Tundra, just to name a few, have been doing some great stuff in this space. So I hope you enjoyed the project. It's personally been a great way to merge my world as both a programmer and a developer. And yeah, this year I'd really like to challenge some ideas about creative coding and how it can be used and what's possible in things like the browser and JavaScript. So stay locked in and I'll no doubt be coming back with some more stuff. Safe.